Russell Talk! I'm Pete Quinnell, welcome to the Russell Talk News. WWE, and by extension wrestling as a whole, has always been somewhat secretive, with the tricks of the trade and kayfabe to maintain, though of course that veil has been slipping since, like, the 80s. And when I say slipping, I mean the veil has been completely ripped off. I mean, hey, we're here talking about reports of backstage thoughts and feelings, producers of matches, booking plans, and other inner workings of companies. I think it's fair to say that we have a pretty good understanding of what's going on in wrestling these days. But there's still one secret rule that WWE just straight up doesn't publicize at all, that matches are completely built around this rule. Some of you may already know about it, and if you do, well done you, pat on the back, but it was highlighted courtesy of Night of Champions this past weekend. During the tag team match of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa, after a pin attempt was broken up, the referee can be heard saying, that's your one save, meaning that legally, during WWE tag team matches, a tag partner can break up a pin precisely once, and all other times are thereby illegal. Brian Alvarez spoke about this on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying, the secret rule that they still, after all these years, they've never told us about, but it is in fact a real rule, and only the wrestlers know about it, and they build their matches around this secret rule that we don't know about. It does seem rather silly that they don't reference this rule basically at all, considering it could be quite crucial to storytelling beats and psychology in a match, but who am I to judge? Keep your secrets. But one person who won't be able to act on that secret rule for a while going forward is Braun Strowman, who according to PW Insider has been sidelined with an undisclosed injury. Braun has been tagging with Ricochet in recent months, but Mr. O'Shea has been appearing on his own as of late, which makes sense given this report. Strowman has reportedly been taken off the board creatively and isn't expected back in WWE anytime in the near future. One WWE source reportedly believes Strowman may have needed surgery for his injury, however this was not confirmed. Whatever the injury may be, we at WrestleTalk would like to wish Strowman the best with his recovery. There may be a hole to fill while Strowman is gone, and it could very well be the case that some people from NXT are being called up at just the right time. Now that NXT Battleground is out of the way, Better Wrestling Experience on Twitter is reporting that this has cleared the way for a couple more NXT call-ups soon. One of those is Bron Breaker, who failed to regain the NXT Championship from Carmelo Hayes. The other is the Creed Brothers, who likewise failed in their challenge of the NXT Tag Team Gold. But that's not all, as Worked Wrestling on Twitter is also reporting that there is still talk backstage in WWE of calling up Ilya Dragunov to the main roster, specifically as the fourth member of Imperial after SummerSlam. With the recent call-ups and pushes of Zoe Stark, JD McDonough and the like, it could be quite a revitalizing time for the WWE main roster. And boy, it just might need it, as one of WWE's own top stars has called its women's division dismally shallow. Wonderful. But first, we have a special message from Turbo Jack. Enjoy. Oh, hi there. I'm Aiden's wrestler, Turbo Jack. And right now, I'm contractually obligated to Wrestle Talk to say thank you to all of Wrestle Talk's amazing patrons. We genuinely love so many of you. I can't express the love of feeling inside you. The tickle little quick sexy love square for the The cleaner, Kenny Shaw. The British Bulldog, Philip Boy J. Smith Jr. Wrestle Talk's personal ring announcer, Ron Regal. Bananas. He can last Sean for longer than you in the ring. Starbucks. Stephen Caster, Shield, the Redacted One, Jake, Will, the MS Warrior, Stuart, $100 Man, CD Homer, Black Play, Trust, and Star Wars Rest. You two can get your own shout out on the rest on news from me, Turbo Jack, and loads more exclusive content. You go over to patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. That's patreon.com forward slash Wrestle Talk. It also includes parts for known stuff. That's not in the URL. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Wrestle Talk. Thank you, Turbo Jack, you weird, weird man. As we mentioned before, with all these call-ups that have been happening, specifically on the women's side of things with Indy Hartwell, Zoe Stark, Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, Caden Carter, and Katana Chance, as well as the returns of people like Tris Stratus, there's potential for the WWE women's division to go through something of a resurgence, especially with a new focus being placed on the women's tag division after Raw, with new champions Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. But one of those champions isn't quite happy with the state of the division right now. Can you guess which of the two, it's Ronda. It's always Ronda. 
Speaking with the New York Post, Ronda spoke about her title win and the complete lack of competition she's got in the division. We want to be the most active champions out there, but with how dismally shallow the women's division is right now, there's not enough women around here to keep us busy for a month. So that's the biggest challenge that we have is to get this company to actually care and invest into this tag division. Scathing words from Ronda, but you know for once, She's not wrong. She went on to say that they're trying to piece together bits of stories and a division together, and they try their best to make chicken salad out of chicken sh etc. I do wish them luck, but you are fighting an uphill battle since long before you were around, Ronda. And speaking of uphill battles, it's time to talk about CM Punk. Although for once, it's not really about CM Punk as much as it is Collision's debut show to take put it ass. And speaking of uphill battles, it's time to talk about CM Punk. Although for once, it's not really about CM Punk as much as it is And speaking of uphill battles, it's time to talk about CM Punk. Although for once, it's not really about CM Punk as much as it... And speaking of uphill battles, it's time to talk about CM Punk. Although for once, it's not really about CM Punk as much... And speaking of uphill battles, it's time to talk about CM Punk. Although for once, it's not really about CM Punk as much as it is Collision's debut show due to take place in Chicago on June 17th. So basically CM Punk. We've been hearing for quite a while now about the maybe soft, maybe hard brand split coming in AEW between Dynamite and Collision and the various forms the rosters may take on those shows. And while it seems there's more Team Punk on one show and Team Elite on another, it'll be interesting to see where the others who are in the middle of those extremes may lie. And we may have a few names now though who may fall on the Dynamite side of things, as there are three AEW stars who have appearances lined up for other wrestling shows on the same date as the Collision debut. Those three people are Roderick Strong, Konosuke Takeshita and John Moxley, meaning BCC in its totality could be dynamite bound, with Strong indicating that potentially Adam Cole and by extension Britt Baker could all be lined up for dynamite too. But of course, card subject to change, and this could all be altered before long. And speaking of last minute alterations, I am on fire with the segues today. Did you know that AJ Styles was on Raw when he's now, in fact, a SmackDown star? <laughs> Do you care about that fact? Has WWE done anything to make you care about that at all? Brand split, LOL, and all that. As he came up short in his title shot against Seth Rollins at Night of Champions, it may have made sense for Styles to go onto SmackDown and to do whatever he's gonna do over there. But instead, he showed up on Raw to say, well done to Seth. Now, you may be shocked to learn that this was a last minute decision and made by <gasps> Vince McMahon of all people. Yes, the thing on the show that didn't care about the brand split was booked by Vince, which honestly couldn't have made more sense if we tried. This report comes from PW Insider, who noted that the inclusion of AJ on Raw was a Vince McMahon call, with some bits of the show reconfigured to include styles. However, the rest of the show was reportedly left pretty much intact, which is good news. And speaking of good news for WWE, last segue today, I promise, this past weekend saw them host both Night of Champions and NXT Battlegrounds, two shows which have garnered a fair amount of praise from wrestling fans. And the feeling backstage is mutual, as according to PW Insider, WWE we are very happy with Night of Champions, with record merchandise sales and viewership in Saudi Arabia. While another report from the same site noted that there was particular praise for both Lyra Valkyria versus Tiffany Stratton and Dijak versus Ilya Dragunov from Battleground as well. And speaking of NXT, I lied, there was one more segue. It's time for my one minute one take of last night's NXT. While I will attempt to recount everything that happened on NXT in one minute and in one take. Wish me luck. I need to do better than Luke. Start the timer. Gigi Dolin defeated JC Jane in a weaponized cage match featuring a wide array of, array of weapons such as tables, chairs, and straps, title of your next premium live event, ending with a huge table bump for Dolin to get the win. There was also a baseball bat. Wesley got confronted by the Dyad, but was saved by Tyler Bate. Tony D'Angelo is still arrested, lol, and this causes a fight between Snacks and Gallus. Noam Dar challenged Carmelo Hayes with an NXT title match for later. Cora Jade and Ivan L got into a confrontation backstage, and Scripps thanked Axiom for unmasking him backstage because he's a weird, weird man. Wesley and Tyler Bate then beat the Dyad. Mustafa Ali randomly joined for guest commentary after an ad break and post-match Ivan Owl ran down to attack Ava at ringside which brought out the Creed brothers which brought out Joe Gacy which prompted Ali to make the save wrestling Tiffany Stratton announced a battle royale for her first number one contender and then got beaten up lol Danny Palmer demanded the mystery attacker reveal themselves who turned out to be Blair Davenport 
Joe Coffey beats Snacks. Mr. Stone tries to get Von Wagner to go to therapy. Cora J beat Ivan L thanks to some Ava interference. A backstage brawl between Diamond Mine and Dyad happens, and Carmelo Hayes beat No I'm Dora in the main event, which had a ru which had run-ins from a bunch of people. And now Baron Corbin is sick of feuding with all the NXT call-ups. He's gone direct to the source and attacked Hayes after the match to set himself up as the new number one contender. I don't know whether whether that was a minute. I didn't have a timer. I hope it was a minute because that would make me feel really good. But why stop your wrestle talk there as you can watch yesterday's news video featuring a raw review from Luke with a cameo from yours truly. Here's a clip. Although for once it's not really about CM Punk as much as it is Collision's debut show to take clip. it ass. I'm gonna go back and do that again. Why can't I do this line? As much as it is. As much as it is. Mother It's fine. I can do it. It's fine. I can do the line. Say the line, Pete.